What's going on everybody? My name is Frank Carrick. I make beats on the internet. And as of December of last year, I am a SB555 user. And so I wanted to make a video um, just going over quickly five things that the 5 can do that the 404 can't. Um, I used this machine for many years. It's still in my setup, as you can see. But um, there's not nearly as much information about this machine out there, and I was doing a lot of research before I bought this. And um, yeah, it, it has a lot of things that I feel like people don't really talk about. So I wanted to go over some of those with y'all. Um, so let's go ahead. First one, number one, it's pretty simple. Um, the metronome. So pretty cool, right? You can change the tempo on it. You can turn it off and on. It still works with tap tempo, but this is nice if you want to start a beat with drums or start a beat with samples. And, you know, a lot of dudes end up getting a metronome on their phone and using that, but um, with the five, it's not necessary. You can just do this internally, and um, it's really nice. Simple, but it is a thing. It's like, oh, yeah, why doesn't the 404 have that? Which is, I think, a theme that you'll probably um, see recurring throughout this video. Next thing, um, it is called effect memory. Basically what this is is just effect presets. Um, you can save the effect presets and then recall them by hitting the pad that you saved it to. So let's go to something. So this drum loop right here. Okay, what we want to do is set up we want to set up a delay. So we're going to turn the delay on. We're going to dial in feedback at noon, the balance is off, and we're going to go to a 16th note delay. So when effect memory is active, if you hit sampling, which is just the fives way of record, it's the same as the 404, it's just called sampling instead of REC. Hit that, choose a pad, we're going to choose 11. Cool. So now it's saved. So if we go back to our drums and we go back to effect memory, we hit this. Let me just make sure that this is off so you guys get the full effect. So now it's on. Just remember that I have the balance all the way down. So if we turn it up, see, but then when you hit 11, again, it's automatic and it's automatically going to go back to the settings that you saved. So it's pretty nice. If you like to use delay during your sets, you know, it's cool. Any effects, basically. Yeah. So, because you see a lot of people doing 404 sets, constantly fiddling with these three effect knobs to kind of reset parameters to their default settings or whatever settings that you're going to use next for them. Um, reverbs and delay and your effects looper and stuff. But with effect memory, it can kind of just make that process easier for you. Um, not as much fiddling, although, you know, if you're not fiddling with knobs, then people are probably going to think you're not doing anything in your set. So uh, be careful about that. Um, all right, so that's number two. Number three is probably the single most appealing feature of this machine to most folks. Um, so I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of what it can do and I'm going to make a separate video later about going in depth because it does have a lot of little things about it but it is the loop capture see this little red sector of the machine down here uh, real quick let me delete what was in there but basically what this allows you to do you have a measure which is like you can tell it how many measures you run a record or you don't have to worry about that you can hit auto start and then record and it's going to wait for you to play something before it starts recording which is nice um, and then there's a source select which basically you see if you can the when the source select button is lit it's only going to record external sources which the 555 uses the same as 404 it's just RCA jacks but if you have it extinguished it's going to record from external and pads which is what you want because we're going to lay down a drum loop with these drum pads that I have and then once you're done, you save it to save it to a pad. Cool. All right. So let's just do a quick drum loop here. And for fun, I'm going to show you how you could use the metronome if you wanted to to keep time while you're doing this. So we're going to turn that down to like a nice 89. 
Okay. And we're going to hit auto start and then record. So now that button is blinking and is waiting for us to make a move. And that's what we're about to do. All right. So yeah, you see, simple loop. And now this is actually counting those for you, which is nice, the beats. But we're not done. We want to add a few more things to that. So if you hit record, see this button changes color. Now we are in overdub mode. So we can just add some stuff if we want. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna just add a shaker. Yeah, cool. All right, so then once you have your drum loop, you save it to a pad, you hit save to pad, select a pad, hit it one more time, and your drum loop is done. So like I said, I'll go more in depth in this feature in future video, but I just turned off gate there, that's all I did. You see it's still looped up. There's your drum loop. So this is a massive time saver. You can do this with uh, sample chops as well, because anything that you can play from the pads, you can do. Um, so this is an excellent feature. Um, I really like it. That's a quick way to delete what's in a loop by the way, effect assign, hold down, and hit record. Again, I'm gonna go more into this in the future, but I'm gonna move on now for the sake of time. So number four, are we on four? Yeah, we're on four, is something, if you were astute, you already noticed that I was using, which is the 555 has velocity sensitive pads. So fixed velocity was not on, which meant that depending on how hard I hit the pads, it actually plays it at a different velocity. I think the easiest way to tell that is with a shaker, so. Yeah, so this is a feature that a lot of people wish that the 404 had. It's a way to spice up your drum loops, make them sound more human. Um, I'm at the point now where, with my own stuff and with a lot of others, I can kind of tell when the drums were made in the SP because there's certain workarounds, but um, for the most part, you know, you hear SP drums and they all kind of have, you know, all the snares, all the kicks are all hidden at the same um, velocity. What most people do is they'll take their hi-hat and they'll record it twice, one on each pad, and then on the second one, you'll like turn it down or maybe trim the start point so that it kind of has a swing to it. But people don't really do that with their kicks and snares that I've seen. I know people do, but I'm just saying like the majority of people. Um, so yeah, this is a really nice way to spice your drum loops up. Between that and the loop capture, it's like making drums on this thing is really, really cool and easy. So yeah, oh, and you have the metronome too. So like using all those three things in tandem and your drums, like depending on what you were doing before on this machine, massive upgrade. So very cool. All right, last thing really quick. I'm also gonna go in depth on this one more because it deserves it, but really quickly. It's called uh, D-Beam. It's like this gimmicky rolling thing that they were doing for a while where you control something with your hands. So this is a little light sensor and it's gonna tell and change the parameters depending on how close your hand is to this base right here. So you can do a synthesizer. It's kind of like a theremin. You can change the voice of the synthesizer with these pads. You can change the um, scale that the key is, that the synth is in, like augmented, major, pentatonic, minor, pentatonic, Dorian, Mixolydian. It has a bunch of them, as you can see. Like there are, there's a ton, and I wish I remembered every single one of them, but they're all kind of weirdly named because they're limited by characters. And then you can also change the key. So basically, you can play in any key in any scale, and you can never go out of key, right? So. <laughs> Turn that down just a little bit and go to a not really ugly sound. Oh yeah, give me the sine wave. So yeah, this is a really, really cool feature. It's kind of corny, but so is like this whole thing. So it's like really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. I've used it sometimes for like tags and beats. I'll just do one of these like that. And if you're in key with the song, it sounds kind of intentional. It's cool. Um, 
cool. So I'll talk more about that later. This is the one that I think most people will use. It's the filter. So, you know, you have four filters to choose from. Low pass and high pass. So you're cutting the... Yeah, so this is good for like drops. This is good for like transitions. And then you have a, I guess it's like a bandpass filter. The weird thing about this one is when you turn it on, it's always, it's already active and then you're just kind of changing it. I don't know. I don't really use this one. I don't really know a use for it, but it's okay. And then this one is like a kind of a flanged or like chorused out. It's kind of hard to hear on drums, but you hear how, what it's doing to the high end there. So yeah. Um, this is a really cool, really cool feature. I use these mainly the high pass and the low pass for live stuff. It's just a cool way to, uh, you know, get people involved. And honestly, it looks kind of dumb, but if people see it for the first time, they're like, whoa, what? Are you controlling that with your hand, bro? It's cool. Um, all right, so that was it. Five things that the five can do that the 404 can't do. Um, and this is not to say this is the only five things this machine can do that the 404 can't. It's got a lot more. I just want to keep it simple for the first one. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Ask me questions down below if you have them. Um, more videos coming soon about this machine because I think it's something of a lost art. I know there's people out there who use it, but I don't see the same support for it online. And I want to spread that information. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Until next time, peace.